Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tammy Ernest for those of you who are new and I am a long arm quilter and here on my channel I like to share customer finishes as well as my own personal projects. So today I have a new sew sampler box to unbox for you. Uh, this is the November box. Um, last week I did a floss tube so I didn't uh, show this so it's time to unbox this and I also have eight customer quilts to show you today so let's get started. So the November Sew Sampler box arrived a couple of weeks ago and I really, um, I opened it up, looked at it and then put it back away. I haven't even really done much with it. So let me open this up and share with you. Uh, the Sew Sampler box is a monthly subscription box put out by the Fat Quarter Shop. And it's just um, a lot of fun. Uh, to me, it's like a, my own personal gift each month that I get to receive in the mail. It's little quilting notions. There's always some pre-cut fabrics and pattern. Right now There's we're in the middle of a, a quilt along with the box as well. So it's just a fun box to receive. I look forward to, to seeing that in the mail. And uh, the, for November, the, um, the theme is Friends Forever. <laughs> and it's a pet theme on the... Um, on the cover there, on the back, there's always a um, nice coupon, and uh, this time it's for Fat Quarter Bundles, which is a nice a nice um, coupon to have. And then there's also a um, QR code for another quilt pattern that's really cute as well. So always some fun stuff there. And then inside the box, they include this little um, card that shows all of the projects and gives information, or not all the projects, all of the notions that are in the box and gives information on them. And this is a fun way to be able to look back each month and remember what was in the box and how to get more of it if I need it. So let's start this time, um, just show you the fabric first. That's usually the, the big deal in the box. This month, it is a fat quarter bundle. There are nine um, fat quarters in this packet. And this is a free spirit line. Let me find the name of it. It's a um, pet theme. It's Balcony Besties. This is a Tula Pink from Free Spirit Fabrics. And so there are, you can see some dog faces on there. There's fish. You can see the fish. And of course, in Tula's bright colors, there's rabbits. And that one... Don't see an animal on that one, so maybe just uh, some um, plants. This one has does it have more than that. It has cats on this one. See him peeking out there. This one is a nice flower print. This one looks like you know. Let's just take it out of there. It's fun to keep them all bundled up and put on my shelf, but um, it would be a lot easier for you to see if they were out of the bundle. So let's do this again. <laughs> so here are here's the dog one, complete with fire hydrant. There are several different dogs on here. So you could fussy cut this and um, use it as some squares or use it as a larger print some cute dog ones. Um, and then here's the fish. This has a very underwater feel. Really cute. The rabbits. I like this one. The, the purples. Oh, see, I would have missed this if I hadn't opened it up. What is that? An iguana? Uh, I don't know. Iguana, maybe? So balcony besties, so I'm, you know, more of a pet theme, and I know some people do keep iguanas. So, and this is for the cat lovers. And again, it's a good thing I opened this up because hiding in all these pretty yellow flowers are some hamsters or guinea pigs. I don't know those kind of animals. <laughs> uh, uh, one or the other. They're not my favorite. So, um, And then here are, like this would be um, like a chain they might wear around their neck. Best friend for your furry friends. 
and then just a couple of fabrics that will go well with the line. That one's really cute. And then you have to have some hearts when you're talking about your furry friends, right? So nine of those fat quarters in this bundle, and again, that's called the Balcony Besties Fat Quarter Bundle. They do include a pattern that you can use um, these, this Fat Quarter Bundle for. What I like about this pattern, it is a cute pattern, first of all. Second of all is they give you three different sizes on the back, and they tell you how much of each one of of the fat quarter bundle that you need. So like if you wanted to do a crib size, which is a 43 by 43, you only need to use four of the of the fat quarters from this bundle. If you wanna make a lap size, you would use all nine. And if you wanted to make a queen, queen size, which is a 94 by 94, you would need these nine plus another 16. So 25 fat quarter fat quarters in total. Then the only other fabrics you need, you need a white background fabric that you can see here. You need some sort of accent fabric that goes around each one of those stars, and then your backing and your binding, so that's all you need. So really cute. Now, the only way to get this pattern, though, is in the box. And um, they do have some boxes available a la carte, which, meaning, which means you don't have to have a subscription in order to get the box. And, but there's only limited numbers, so you'll wanna grab those fast if you are interested in this pattern and or the fat quarter bundle. Um, the fat quarter bundle you can buy separately, but the only way to get this pattern is through the box. Really cute, so that's called balcony quilt. And that's a fat quarter put out by the fat quarter shop. Really cute. All right, let me bundle these back up and show you the next item. So the next thing in the box, I like the box always includes three or four little uh, notions of some sort. And a lot of times these are things that I may not buy on my own, um, that I may see in a quilt store, but not know if I want to try them or not. But by getting them in this box, it gives me a good excuse to try them. One of those things is this classy clamps for hanging up your, um, your quilts. I have seen these. I've seen them in magazines. I have never purchased my own. So I'm excited to give these a try and to see how they really work. So classy clamps, wooden quilt hangers attach easily to walls with the included screws. These stylish clamps are designed to work with a wide variety of hangings including quilts, fiber art, rugs, tapestries, and more. So if you're into any of those things you wouldn't, um, you'd be able to use these as well. So you hang the back, back part on, um, you can kind of see the, the drawing right there. So you hang, you screw the back part into the wall and then the front part um, screws onto that back piece. And the by um, screwing those two together, that's what holds your quilt down underneath. So great idea, great way to change out quilts, you know, to hang them up. Um, and this way you don't need um, you know, I don't think you would need a sleeve on the back because you're not running a dowel rod through there. You would be hang, you would be pressing these between the clamps there. So really neat. Let me see. Um, I did not look ahead of time to see if they have different sizes. These come, this one comes in a pack of two and it says small light ones. So I'm assuming there are heavier duty ones too. And you may already be familiar with these. I just have never purchased them myself. So I'm excited to give them a try. So in the box, or you can purchase those separately and I will put the link down below for those. The next thing in the box is one of my favorite things and these are Wonder Clips. Do you use Wonder Clips? I love Wonder Clips. I think they're so pretty. These are done in the red. This is a 10 piece pack of them, but you can get them in multiple colorways. I use these a lot when I am putting binding on a quilt, um, when I'm pressing my binding. So I attach my binding to the front and then I press it over to the back when I'm waiting for my hand to do my hand sewing and I use the binder clips around. Can never have too many of them. I love binder clips. Wonder Clips is what they're called. I call them binder clips because that's what I use them on is my binding, but um, Wonder Clips. So fun, so fun. And there's different sizes of them too. Um, this is the original size. I know I've seen some larger ones too, and I really, I really like those. Never have too many of those. Then 
they uh, do this quite often, not quite often, I would say a couple times a year, is to include a little sample of Mettler thread. And so you might have heard me talk about this before. I like to keep Mettler thread in my binding bag. Um, and this is a variegated, like rosy pink color. Let me see what the actual name of it was. Um, let me find it. This is Dusty Rose and it's a variegated. Now in my binding bag or in my binding, you wouldn't necessarily see this color. Um, but if I was doing a pink backing or something like that, it would be nice to use. What I like about the Mettler thread is it's a cotton thread, but it has a little bit of a silk finish on it. Um, and I like how smoothly it pulls through as I'm doing binding on quilts. And this is just a little sampler size. They sell this in larger um, spools as well, but I like these little sample ones to try out and to use in my binding, in my binding bag. This is a 50 weight thread. And see if it tells me anything else. There's 109 yards on this spool, but obviously you can buy it in a larger one as well. And let me see what that size is real quick for you. So you know how much is on. No, you can buy it in that one. Dusty Rose Variegated 100% Cotton Silk Finish Small Thread. You can buy it just in the same size with 109 yards uh, on that little thread. So if you need some little um, spools for your binding bag, you could do that too. It's almost like a strawberry lemonade type color. It's like a pink. This in the picture on the computer, you can see a little more yellow. Um, but it's like that what it reminds me of is like a strawberry lemonade kind of whitish creamish in there variegated with the pink Really cute And then the final thing in the box this month is the pattern for the pressed garden quilt along pressed flowers quilt along So this quilt along started about April. So we're on block number eight and uh, I do not have my block done yet. I will show that to you as soon as I can get it finished. Um, but this quilt along has start, like, started in April, as I mentioned, and will run through probably next March is what I'm assuming. That'll be all 12 blocks, and then they'll give us the setting instructions. The fabrics shown are the Sugarberry Collection by um, Bunny Hill Designs. It's a beautiful collection. I am doing mine in scrappy pinks and browns, not with a called for and I'm really liking how it's turning out. So as soon as I get my block done, I will be able to show you that as well. A lot of fun. This comes either as a card like this, or you can also get it in a um, digital download for purchase on the Fat Quarter Shop. So, so fun. So that's my box for this month. I always enjoy receiving it, like I said, and it's just my own little gift to me once a month, right? All right, I have eight customer quilts to show you this week. And so we will start, just start down the, the stack that is on the desk here. Here are some pictures of the first one. This is Cynthia's quilt and isn't this beautiful? Now I am not normally a batik loving person. It's just not my favorite. I love these batiks. I love the colors of them, the richness of them, all done in the browns and the rusts and even a little bit of blue thrown in, um, a little bit of the rosy red color. I just, I really like these batiks. I'll have to see if there's a, I didn't look it up before I got on camera today to know what line this was. Um, but maybe I can find that for you. I know that this sets of fabric was donated to Cynthia or gifted to Cynthia um, by a friend and Cynthia put it together. I think she bought this cream color batik and it's beautiful. It goes along with it really well. Um, but she put it together and used the pattern called Boxed Up by Boxed Up by Cluck Cluck So. The pattern, the size that she did is the throw size, and this is a 58 by 70. It uses 10 fat quarters 
or 35 pre-cut 10 inch squares. So this whole pattern can either be done with layer cakes or with fat quarters. There are four different sizes in the pattern, and so this is the throw size. There's even a twin size and a queen size, and then there's one that down from this one, more of a crib size. Really cute, I love this. Um, what I love, I like this, that it doesn't go all the way to the edges. Um, kind of a modern feel on just a, you know, a simple quilt, but, um, or a simple pattern. How we leave these cream color squares there. We don't take the lattice work all the way to the edge. We don't add a border on it. I think this is just really pretty and I am sure it came together very quickly and I just, I just love it. I think it's really nice. <laughs> love the colors reminds me of fall without having a fall themed fabrics you know i just i really like this for the backing fabric cynthia chose a shannon cuddle oh i love this this is in the sand color and it just does it looks like sand it looks like you just drawn in the sand doesn't it? it is so pretty so pretty and you can see the pantograph that is the woven wind pantograph I don't use this a lot and I should use it more because I just think it's very um, very striking it's similar to a Baptist fan I think it, you know kind of gives you that hint of a Baptist fan by having the curves but a much more modern look and um, it nests together really well so this is one line you can see there almost like again kind of a clamshell but then with the the lines being on the diagonal so just a nice design a little different than um, uh, you know more traditional and it just blends really well and I think it did really well with the straight piecing on the front we added a little bit of curvature without softening the quilt without making the quilt what I want to say dainty you know um, if we'd added a lot of curves and swirls it would have made it feel a lot more feminine and I think by leaving by adding in this curvature dimension but not doing um, a lot of overall swirls or, or spirals or things like that we added it a second layer of dimension but didn't make the quilt overly feminine if that makes sense to it not that it's a masculine quilt but I just I think it just adds to the richness of the of the quilt so so pretty and again love the minky backing I love the feels of these quilts um, a little heavier than just using cotton but I just like the weightedness if you're a person that just likes a, a heavier heavier quilt I just I just really like it I like the um, the stability it gives to a quilt but an extra softness I just really am in love with Minky. This is Shannon Cuddle. And what Cynthia did, Cynthia is actually a local client to me, but um, to, for the Minky, what she did was order it from the Fat Quarter Shop and had it sent directly to me. So um, she's local to me, but we're still about an hour apart. So it is a little bit of a distance for us to get together. But that that's an option. Fat Quarter Shop has so many colors available in the Minky. They have different sizes. You can get it in the 60 width. You can get it in the 90 width, um, which is great for most of your quilts. You don't have to piece the backing and have it sent directly to me. So you're not paying the extra shipping to have it sent to you. And then you're paying again to have it sent to me. Um, have it sent directly to me and we'll just uh, cut out one of those steps. And oh, just love that. Love it so much. All right, I have a second quilt from Cynthia and it also has some minky backing. And if the last quilt felt fallish, this one feels very summery, very, very bright, very fun. Um, this pattern is by Just Get It Done Quilts. And if you go to their website, they have an entire series of um, stash busters. And this is stash busters number nine. Goes together very quickly. You have large pieces. Um, and you'll have to check those out. There's videos that go along with it. They're free downloadable patterns. 
and uh, you'll get a lot of beautiful quilts churned out quickly using those videos and uh, those patterns. So I don't have information about the fabrics. Um, again, brights, pinks, we have go from the pinks to the oranges to the yellows, then um, to the blues and greens and purples on this. Um, really like it. Just very bright, very fun, very festive, very warm feeling, just the bright sunshiny feel there. These are probably almost like five, I wanna guess. I'm just guessing I didn't look at the pattern um, intensely. I'm guessing five by 10, five by eight pieces. And just in your layout, you're putting it together very quickly and I have a beautiful quilt. This ends up measuring 48 by 65. And then Cynthia chose the coral cuddle for the back. Isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness. Look at that pantograph. Oh, I love this. So this is the Moulin Rouge pantograph. Lots of swirls, lots of big bubbly swirls. And so a lot of the designs that you'll see on my website um, very similar and then there's swirls or there's the the feather kind of uh, loop there um, but you can they're each a little different by how chunky they are you know this is chunky <laughs> but then it's so so pretty we did use a cream color thread I forgot to mention that on the last one that one was a cream color thread as well um, just a couple steps up from a white it was not an overly taupey or overly um, cream. I just, you know, a little bit of an off-white and that's what I did in this one as well. So those are Cynthia's two quilts this week. Let's move on to Nancy's quilt. So Nancy's quilt is another spool quilt, but this one is done by Thimble Blossoms and the pattern is called Threadbare. And so beautiful. Um, Nancy has done blue spool ends. They're just um, different ones. They're not the same one all the way through. So different blue spool ends and then all of the center spools are things from her, uh, from her stash. A lot of them have quilting or sewing themes to them. So this one has buttons. Um, I have it upside down, but let me show you this one. This one's so cute. Well, you can just see part of her. This is a lady sitting and sewing and doing some um, hand quilting. There's another one where you can see more of her. Isn't that cute? She's sewing at her table right there. <laughs> so a lot of them um, either have sewing machines. There's sewing machines on this one. There's buttons. There's um, spool ends. Just... Um, a lot of notions. Let me open this up. So on the top there, that fabric has notions and um, threads and pins and things. The one below that is like spool ends. They're really cute. And then the one below that one has sewing machines all in different colors, very pretty. And then she's added in a lot of floral fabrics as well that go along really well, very pretty. This pink fabric has some pins on it. There's others with buttons. There's some more pins, just really cute, really cute. So how this one differs from the Sew Scrappy Spools. So you'll notice this one um, it still alternates from horizontal to vertical blocks. Um, the sizing of the spool ends is a little different. Uh, you'll notice on, on this one, from on Camille's pattern, that the spool end actually connects right here with the edge of the spool. If you look back at the So Scrappy one, it's not done that way. They're offset a little bit. There is no sashing work in this one, which creates a really cute pinwheel effect right here where the four spools come together. Really fun. 
and so no sashing work, no cornerstones on this one. The size of the spool, I would say, is pretty similar. I think the um, these edges are a little bit bigger. This square, I it, it looks like a five inch square to me. So if you don't want to do all of the um, different blocks that Lori Holt does in her sew scrappy spools, you can alternate for just you know a piece of your favorite sewing fabric and put in there. It makes for a really cute quilt. Really, really fun. Now, Camille Roskelly also has, she has several spool um, patterns out. She's got a mini spool one that's really cute. She's got a pattern that's actually called spools that it looks like the spools are stacked onto each other, but like they're offset. So um, kind of a wonky stack of spools. That one's really cute. And then there's one that's called spools two. If I remember right, that one, similar to this where the blocks alternate back and forth, but in between the, the rows, so in between like this row and this row, there there's some sashing work and then there's a whole strip of just like, maybe it's two and a half inch squares, I don't know, but it's all different colors all the way across and it's really cute too. So there's like four different patterns of Camille Roskelly's that she has using all spool ones. The mini one would be a great one to make and put up in your sewing room. It's not real... It's not real big. I want to say like 20 by 20 or something. It's not really big. And it would be a really cute wall hanging for your sewing space. And um, so many designers have spool quilts. It's just a lot of fun. Of course, we've been doing the Sew Scrappy Spool one all, all year long. Um, Sherry McConnell of A Quilting Life has one. And it uses like a, a larger spool and then four smaller spools in, a set in the block next to it. It's really cute too. So, so much fun. Just love it. You can make a whole sewing um, themed room, couldn't you, with all the spool quilts and all those kind of things. Just really fun. So backing fabric, Nancy went with just um, a plain, it's kind of a mottled blue color there. And she just wanted a stipple print on there, so see if you can see that. So a great um, pantograph that goes together quickly. This is something you could hand do if you're doing hand um, quilting either on your domestic or on your own long arm and um, it doesn't you know doesn't take away from the front of the quilt at all it's just a nice texture a nice way to um, to finish off a quilt and with all of the um, emphasis being on the pattern itself and the fabrics that you used really beautiful so fun. So that's Nancy's quilt. Now here I said we were going to work down the stack that was on the desk and then I jumped over and pulled one of the quilts off of the ladder. And the, the reason I did that is because the other two quilts on the desk as well as the rest of them that are on the ladder all come from Lisa and I just decided we would do all of those together. So we've been through Cynthia's two quilts, we've been through Nancy's quilt, so how about we look, the, look at the first quilt from Lisa this week. talk about another quilt that would come together very fast a great stash buster this again is the farm girl gingham quilt from Lori Holt this is in her book farm girl vintage 2 and she gives so many different sizes so many different um, layout not layouts but different sizes of blocks that you can use to create different size quilts and I love this pattern for that reason so um, if you're wanting to make a large quilt you're not cutting all two and a half inch squares to create your gingham pattern. You're cutting larger squares to give you a larger quilt and you get the same the same gingham effect and it's just so pretty. But if you're making a baby quilt then you're cutting your squares much smaller. It still goes together quickly and you have that same gingham look. Just love it. So these patterns use three fabrics. You have a dark fabric, you have a medium print, and you have a light print. Now you can tell from a distance that this, this reads as a light print, but look when you get up close. It's actually a pretty blue print. It's got a white background with the blue zigzags on top of it. But when you lay it beside these other ones, it takes on the effect of the light 
this one's the medium, and then this one's the dark. A great way to audition fabrics for this, especially a quilt like this, is to lay three fabrics out next to each other that you want to use, take a picture, switch that picture to monochrome or black and white on your phone, and you can very definitely see the shading. Um, you'll be able to see whether there's enough contrast between your dark and your medium and your light print to be able to put in this quilt where you get the contrast um, of the three colors. Because that's what creates the gingham um, pattern is the, the, the contrast between the three. All right. You'll notice this fabric line. This is the Nantucket Summer Fabric Line. I know Lisa have purchased this. She's made several quilts using it and uh, finishing up with the, the rest of it and just love it, just love it. Camille Roskelly's new line will be coming out just a few short months. It's very similar, very pretty. Um, and just, just love, love the richness, the classiness. Um, and again, from a distance, this takes on almost a dark solid, but you can see the print in it, really pretty. For the backing, Lisa chose a cuddle, <laughs> and this is the Shannon cuddle. I believe this is um, pewter, or it's the silver. I'll link them both down below, and you can look at the difference depending on which one you're wanting. I really think this is the pewter one. It's a little darker, or maybe it's gray. I don't know. If you go to Fat Quarter Shop, they have so many different colors. You can choose so many different ones, different shades, and um, will fit perfectly for whatever project you're working on. Love this. You can see the pantograph really well there. This is the Wishbone Pantograph by Long Arm League. And um, just so pretty. Look at all the texture on there. I love Minky for that reason because it really highlights the texture. And you saw both you saw that on both of those quilts, the Woven Wind on the back and then the Moulin Rouge on the back. You it, the minky allows you to see those pantographs so well. It's almost like a whole cloth quilt. You just, you see the pantograph so well, the texture that just, um, just is beautiful. I tend to like the minky that, um, not the bubble or not the ones that have already a pattern inset in it because I feel like the quilting is making that pattern for you. And sometimes if we use the ones that have the bubble on it or, um, or that have like the inset hearts and things. I think the pantograph then that we choose kind of competes with that. And um, I think those are great if you're doing more very open stitching, um, not so much, you know, of a tight design like this. For a tighter design like this, I think the minky that's just uh, no pattern on the back is really the best. So again, I always um, encourage you to use batting in with your minky. Um, if you don't, then in this, it makes for a heavy quilt, but it makes for just this very floppy quilt. It's very hard to control in my opinion. I really like, um, I really like the batting along with the, the minky. We did use a light, light gray thread on this with the darker blue colors on the front. Again, it doesn't show on the back, but, um, because it's the same color. I, you know, if I used a pink, it, it probably would. You'd be able to see some of the stitching, but um, otherwise those stitches just melt right into the minky. Um, but we used a light gray. Didn't want to overpower the blues there, and a gray just works really well on the, on the blues. The wishbone, really cute. Now, I want you to take notice. This one, you know, it's pretty dense here. I want to say, you know, those are probably two the circle itself, the little raindrop there is probably two inches or so like that. But I've got another one coming up that we did it even denser. And so I just want you to take notice of kind of the size and then see what happens when we do it even tighter. Um, it's just really pretty, but just to be able to see the difference there. All right, let's move on to Lisa's second quilt.
So I just decided to go ahead and pull this one down as well. This one uses the wishbone pantograph also, and we will talk about that in just a minute. This quilt is um, from Fat Quarter Shop. The pattern is um, a Jolly Bar pattern. So the fabrics all come from Cory Yoder. This is her Peachy Keen fabric line. And um, Fat Quarter Shop does a special cut. I don't know of anybody else that do, does this. They call them a Jolly Bar. They've got whole books of patterns with Jolly Bar patterns. Um, what a Jolly Bar is, it, 42 cuts that are five by 10. So half of a layer cake, okay? So, and they call that a Jolly Bar. So right, right like that. So they take fabric lines from all different people, all different designers, and they will package a Jolly Bar, which is the fabrics that they cut to this size, along with a pattern, with a Jolly Bar pattern. You can also buy books that are just Jolly Bar patterns. So if you have layer cakes and you wanna cut those layer cakes in half, and you'd be able to make these same patterns, or you could use yardage, it doesn't matter. Um, but this one, the fabric line is Peachy King by Cory Yoder. And on Fat Quarter Shop, you can look this up as Peachy Keen Jolly Bar. They also call it the Fruit Cobbler Jolly Bar. So um, when I'm searching it, I had to search it as Peachy Keen Jolly Bar, but in the description, it, they also call it the Fruit Cobbler Jolly Bar. So uh, just be aware of that. Love the, the um, melon color, the lemon, the lime colors, the blues, the grays, just a very pretty springy feel. And uh, this pattern, you know, looks like a lot of squares, but then you have this little diamond effect coming in by adding a little easy corner triangle onto those four blocks right there. And then it creates the diamond effect in the middle. Really pretty. So if you're wanting to make a quilt with a certain line, um, it'd be great to go to Fat Quarter Shop and look up some of the different Jolly Bar ones they have. I mean, they have tons of different designers that they have cut this um, specialty size of fabric for and created patterns for them. Really fun. Here is the backing fabric that Lisa chose. This is Canyon Birds by Studio E. Very modeled print there, um, but it matches the Cory Yoder fabrics really well. Very pretty. So let's talk about this wishbone. It's gonna be a little harder to see just because I get the glare off the white the white fabrics but um there can you see how much tighter this one is so these you know they're only about the size of my finger here so lisa asked me to use the wishbone pantograph but she said she wanted it pretty dense and um you know and the other one the that one up there the uh, far farm girl gingham one it was pretty dense as well but just the extra texture it creates when we do it just a tad bit smaller really pretty we used a white thread so that it would not um, nothing would overpower on this white fabric oh i just love it love it love it so so pretty very nice so fun all right let's move on we'll go down here and we'll do a couple of them on the desk that are from lisa This one's so darling. This pattern is called Fish and Chips, and this is one of the Vila Rosa designs, the little cards that you can see in your um, quilt stores. They're only two bucks for one of those little cards, and just um, makes a really cute quilt. And I found out today that you can actually go onto the Vila Rosa designs, or something like that, I'll link it down below, their website, and you can order them either as um, the little cards themselves, or you can get the uh, PDF download as well, and uh, which that's really handy. So if uh, you don't see this one in your local quilt shop, then you'll be able to do that. Fish and Chips is the name of this one. A great pattern for using either a panel print or a large um, 
a large yardage like this where you don't want to cut up all those little things um, all the little pictures it looks so pretty just like this and so a great pattern for that either a big panel scene that you have or yardage like this where you like the um, the motifs in them and don't want to cut them separate and then the uh, squares all around the edge this fabric line let me find it this is happy harvest by three wishes fabric I love this love the blue truck the old truck, any old truck. I love lanterns and the pumpkins stacked up. It says, Welcome Fall. It's just so pretty. And then she's done a gray sashing with it um, and the border. So, so pretty. And then once again, she has chosen a cuddle fabric. Look at this one. This is white. Um, let me find it. This is Shannon Cuddle in white. This is the 90 inch. I love this. I love this. So, so pretty. Very clean and bright. Oh, just so pretty. I have to see what um, binding she's going to put on this because that'll really set that backing off. So the pantograph, you can see this is the diagonal plaid bias cut. I just love this pantograph. So we did use a white thread because of the white minky. Um, now again, the, the threads soak right into the minky, but if I would have used a gray or something like that, I think you would start seeing those little pricks of color, and I didn't want that. We wanted this to be as pure and clean as we could. Love that. And these squares, I did them kind of small. Lisa likes a lot of texture like I do, um, so I don't fear that it's going to be too small for her. So these little squares, I mean, they're probably um one and a half inches or something maybe two but pretty small and the white thread on the front again because a lot of this um the whole scene this yardage it's really got a white backing a back you know it, it's um printed on white the the backing is white i don't know if i'm explaining that well but so the white just blends right in Oh, so pretty. What a fun, fun quilt. Really like that. Again, those big prints that you don't want to cut small and see how she's used them around the edges too. Um, just really shows off the designs of the fabric and not cutting them so small that you can't see what it is. You know, if you cut this small, you're just not gonna see what, that, what the picture is. Um, just love it. So fun. All right, I have a Christmas quilt from Lisa also. you half the tree it's hard to hold up the middle of the quilt um, this pattern is called charming Christmas and this is a free pattern from fat quarter shop as well I have linked it down below the size that I have here um, the quilt pattern is 59 by 59 they also make a mini version which is only 26 by 26 this one uses two charm packs or 68 five inch squares so at least she started with one charm pack that was the Holiday Charm Pack by Robert Kaufman, and that had all Christmas prints. And then for the rest of the five inch squares, she pulled fabrics from her stash, reds and greens um, that she could use. So not even all Christmas ones, but ones that blended well with that those Christmas prints. Then she added for her background fabric, this white one, let me see how much it calls for. It calls for two and a half yards of the background fabric, and she chose a Lori Holt print. How fun is that? Ooh, I like it. The name of this one is Cozy Sparkle in the white. Um, Lori does have different colorways with the sparkle on top of other background colors, and Lisa chose the white one for this one. I love that. It just ties in all of the Christmassy colors 
um, in the background fabric. You could have done just a plain white, you know, but I, I just think that's really fun. It almost like it's snowing um, sparkles, <laughs> you know. Um, really cute. So those five inch squares are all the way around and then there's a border of that sparkle print as well. Backing fabric, she chose a red. Ooh, like that. And that is Illumina 108 inch backing. For the pantograph, we chose, this is called Diamond Loop. And I think you can see it a little better on the front. Not necessarily a Christmas pantograph, but I think it works really, really well. Almost kind of looks like old Christmas bulbs or, you know, did you have those that were the kind of like the plasticky, not plastic, they were more like a glass bulb. Doesn't it kind of look like that? I've used this pantograph on kids quilts before. It's a nice texture pantograph. It's kind of, it's a diamond shape right here, but then with the, um, um, what I want to say, the little loop right there and then a loop down here, um, you know, and then offset rows. It's a really cute one. And I just think it worked really well with this Christmas one. Lisa had asked me about this and I kind of gave her some other suggestions and then we came back to this one. I'm like, no, I, I want to try it. I think it'll look really nice and I'm, I'm glad we did. So not every Christmas quilt has to have a Christmas pantograph on it. You can just do a texture one um, with a hint towards it. Yeah, it does kind of give a hint towards an old Christmas bulb, um, but doesn't necessarily have to. And we can use the same pantograph on something else totally different, and it would be just as pretty. Really fun. So the thread, I actually went with an off-white um, not I could have done a white because of the background fabric is white but I was afraid with a white thread it was going to be too strong on these colors here so by doing an off white it blended pretty well with the white background fabric um, and it still you can still see it on these Christmas fabrics but it wasn't so bright as you know that a white would have been I think that worked well and then on the back with the uh, cream color on the back. Um, it wasn't as bright as if I had done a white on there either. Really fun. Just so pretty. And again, this one measures um, 59 by 59. So you could have it as a throw on your couch. You could make it as a wall hanging. It would be really fun. All right, I have one more of Lisa's and this one is just as beautiful as all the others. I am in love with this barn. Oh my goodness, is it not cute? That big tall silo and the star, the barn star on there. Oh, I just love this. So that's the whole, this is a um, like a medallion type quilt. You start with the beginning, or the beginning. You start with the center and then you add the different rows around, you know, in a circular pattern around. So then we had this whole checkerboard then we have the flowers, and then we go to the stars, and then finally a border. And that's the way it is all the way around the quilt. It's really pretty. This is pattern is called uh, Meadowland Pattern. This is by Beverly McCullough of Flamingo Toes. She did a whole quilt along with this, and I have linked that down below so that you can watch um, that. It was earlier this year, and this uses the Sweet Acres fabrics, and these are super sweet. Um, it has, we've seen this before, I think actually some of this fabric came in a Fat Quarter Shop box earlier in the year, and it has the, the milk cans, some um, plaids, and some, um, oh, what do I want to say, pinwheels, and then it's got this that, al that looks like little cross stitches, but it's in the shape of barns. It is so pretty. Here's the little milk cans and all the different colors, and the blues and the yellows, 
and the reds and the pinks. I just, just love it. It's absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. And the corners, let me see if I can show you this. In the four corners, you have this pinwheel block. And then you also have this um, half square triangles as the, as the cornerstone of the flower blocks as they were going around. So, so pretty. Oh my goodness, I'm in love. And the backing fabric that Lisa chose, look at this. This is a large print of the same barn. Um, the barns are all different directions, so it's not a directional print. So it looks like the red one's upside down, but um, the blue one's right side up and the green one's sideways. So it's non-directional. And with those large flowers, isn't that pretty? It just goes along with the pattern on the front so well. So the fabrics, she has created the pattern to go along with the fabrics. The barn is all pieced. It is not um, appliqued at all. It's not one big panel. You're piecing fabrics together to create that barn, but it's the same barn that's on the fabrics, like on the, uh, the backing fabric. Oh, I just love it. For the pantograph, Lisa chose the 60s Mod Butterfly, and this is um, a Julie Hurt print or pattern. Can you see that well enough? There, you can kind of see it. Now, um, for those of you who are doing digital edge-to-edge -edge pantographs, this one does stitch out sideways, so you have to load your quilt sideways like this because it stitches that line, does the butterfly, stitches the line, does the butterfly that way. So make sure when you orient your quilt, you do it that way. Not that it would look bad the other way, but um, I, I don't know. I, I like the butterflies going down the quilt so that the lines are going down. It would work just as well the other way, but it would look like that, a little different. Um, so make sure you, when you're loading your quilt on, you're doing it the correct way so that you get that pantograph to stitch out the way you like. Did a white thread on this one with all of the background fabric being white, with the backing fabric having the white base to it too. White was just the right, the right uh, choice for this one. Oh, I just love it. All of today's quilts were so fun. Everything from spring to summer to fall to Christmas, we had it, we had it all. It just is so fun. So I hope you are making lots of time to quilt. And as I always say, every quilt is worth finishing. So if you are in need of long arm quilting services, I hope you'll send me an email or put your quilt in the mail to me. Whether it's your first quilt that you're just finishing up, maybe it's your hundredth quilt for the year, maybe it's a quilt that you found in your grandmother's uh, cedar chest and you want to get it finished, it's worth finishing. So I uh, hope if you, if you are in need of longer quilting services, my information is down below and we will see you back here next week. I hope you may have a wonderful week.